Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from North Flight Images, and this is a, a short video covering some new functionality in Calibrite Profiler. Now, Calibrite Profiler is the application that has succeeded many bits of X-Rite software and other stuff before, uh, and you would normally use it for calibrating profiling monitors. So it works for a whole load of devices there. Um, if you looked at it carefully when you open the software up, you will see that there are actually quite a few greyed out bits of functionality. Now, these were always intended to be introduced over time. I think they've probably taken a bit longer than uh, Colorbright might have hoped, but they're here. Um, the latest bit in version two of this software, which you can download for free, uh, allows you to make DNG camera profiles and also ICC camera profiles. Now, to make a profile for a camera, a DNG profiles, I put links in the notes. I've covered this uh, on quite a few things. In fact, I covered making dual illuminant profiles for these two uh, Niwa light panels that I tested. Uh, but I've used these in quite a few things. Uh, these are set to 3800K color temperature. The, dialed down the brightness quite a bit so it doesn't sort of blow out everything in the video. But these are excellent for small scale product photography. Now the displays on the back of them say 3800K. I did some recent measurements where I showed that actually by setting them at 3800K, they're over just over 4,000, about 4,050 actually. Uh, similar to the lights I've got up here and similar to the light that I've got set over here and the monitors and everything. So it makes it look okay-ish on a video. Now, DNG profiles, why would you use them? Well, your camera white balance is fine, and for many things, setting a white balance using a gray card is enough for color. But once you start using uh, LED panels like this, and it was much worse back when I used uh, cold fluorescent based tubes, the spectral response of these is not quite the same as what the camera is expecting for a particular white balance color temperature. So the way you get around that, if you're using Lightroom or Photoshop, I don't use Lightroom myself, but you can use this with that. You take a photograph of a color checker card. Now that's a standard color checker card. Um, I've got several versions of these. The one between the lights here is the uh, Passport. Now I've had one of these for years, used it for a lot. I put lots of links in the notes to more information, including the old x version of the software here, also free. Um, it's Mac and PC, uh, this one here. Even, the old x one still works fine on this uh, MacBook Pro. Um, so you, know, you don't need to get this. You don't need to update it if you've got the x software and it works fine. Uh, this has been tweaked a bit. It's a little bit easier to use. It's a little bit friendlier and there's quite extensive help files with it. But the gist of it is that you take a photograph of a target like this, you then convert the, as a raw file, convert it to a DNG, and there's some free Adobe software DNG converter, which will do that for your raw files. You then drop the raw files onto the software and it will detect the image and it will let you create a profile. Now, a few little gotchas on this. The image, you need to be careful with the exposure. Um, I set the camera before I did this to a color temperature of 4100. Now, it's raw files, so it doesn't really matter that much, but by setting it to that, it just ensures consistency. And so I've set that, yeah, the raw file to that, uh, so the camera settings to that, and I've just taken a picture, converted it to DNG, dropped it onto here, and made a profile. Now, the profile is then workable in, say, camera raw or something like that. Now, that's the DNG profiles. You can and the one I did when I was testing these lights earlier, the profile goes, uh, it's a dual illuminant one, whereby you take, create one profile at the warmest setting of the lighting and one profile at the coolest setting of the lighting. Those two profiles, are com those are combined together to call, form what's called a dual illuminant profile. Useful if you've got light that varies, but if you're using constant lights and always using at the setting, I'd suggest making a single illuminant profile. 
So I now have a profile and there is a profile manager option available. And I have, if I look at there, it's just telling me what printer profiles are on, but you can look at camera profiles as well. So you can look at that, see what profiles you've got, um, and you use them from within Camera Raw or Lightroom. I mentioned that there are a few more advanced options. You can make ICC profiles. So if you're doing this, if you want one of these, typically if you're using Capture One uh, raw processing software, um, I don't have it. It's not one I've ever warmed to personally. Um, I can see uses for it where I would definitely use it in some studio applications and the like where I would want something like that. But in general, I just don't like the way it works. But then again, I don't like Lightroom either. Um, so there you go. But if you want to do this properly, and the expensive way of doing it, rather than one of these little targets, and there are larger versions of these as well, I've got here and it's kept in a plastic bag because uh, I don't want finger marks and dust on it. These are expensive. This is a Color Checker SG. This is the card I would photograph if I was going to make an ICC profile for higher end use. Um, this has got all the colors. These are quite tricky to light. Now I have got, and I'll put links again because I've been testing and reviewing kit like this for over, well, 15 years at least. And I've got, I've been involved with the testing and creation of many bits and pieces of software here over the years with X-Rite. I used to do quite a lot of work with X-Rite. They've moved on to Calibrite. So yeah, I've done some work with them now. So um, it's free software. Uh, these cards most definitely, well, the, the SG card is quite expensive. This one lives in its plastic bag, in its case, lives in a drawer out of the way for the rare occasions I need to use it. Uh, these little ones, are, well, the, um, yeah, the passport ones are easier to use, but you can get you know, cardboard ones as well. Uh, some of those come with things. Yeah, you buy a product and you'll get one of these with it. Uh, now, I've got all this done. Um, is there anything else? Well, no, it's, it's really quite simple. Um, do read the help files on this when the info, they are much better written. Um, they actually tell you why you would do something, how you would do something. A few little tips when you're doing, taking a photograph, bracket your exposures, open up your raw files in advance, before converting them to DNG. Have a look with the, um, with your white balance tool to check what the brightness is of the 18% gray. Uh, that's the one underneath the yellow on this. Uh, it should be around about 130, something like that. Make too sure too that you're not overexposed so the white patch mustn't be burnt out, i.e. 255, 255, 255. Uh, that's not good for making profiles. Uh, likewise, you want to see that the black, there is um, that it's not down at zero or anything like that. But with a, a good RAW file, I test this using this Canon R5, works a treat with it. Um, when photographing these, little gotcha, if you accidentally get a picture, because I was taking a picture just set up here, um, I got a photograph that was in portrait orientation of this. I dropped the por portrait orientation photograph onto the software and it really didn't like it. So take a bit of care, read the notes on getting good photos. Because if you're making profiles, much like printer profiles, it's the quality of the measurements that come through in the end result. Um, so if you get the measurements wrong, i.e. a bad photo to base your profile on, yes, this software will pick up some errors, but no, if you want to make a garbage profile, it will probably let you make a garbage profile. So just take some care over it. And when you're doing this, um, I mean, obviously I've got lights all over the place in here. When you're taking your photographs to use for this, just use the lights you're going to use. Um, if you've got other lighting systems, there's no limit to the number of profiles you could make. So if you want a profile for you know, some other light that you've got, just some you know, bit of lighting, some LED panel of any other sort, you can mix them and match them. But remember that to get the best results of it, you do need consistent lighting. But uh, let's see, I put, do check the notes. I put more info there. But if you've got any questions, let us know. And I shall be returning to uh, the Calibrite Profiler software probably when more functionality appears. Um, who knows, we still have scanner and printer 
uh, profiling left. I don't think they're covered yet, but uh, so it's monitors at the moment, cameras, but not yet printer profiling. Uh, and I'll be coming back to that one when I have another printer to test and their software has been released for it. But anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.